So let me begin by saying the first thing. In all of the companies that are presenting in this category, we're the only ones that are not a database. So that's the first thing you need to know. Just to give you an idea of uh, why we're not a database and why is it that we chose to do it the way we did it. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a background on that. And this is the story of why we got uh, started up, why we decided to do the things that we do. Uh, before I started Scalac, I was the chief technology officer at Network 18. It's a massive media company in India. They run uh, CNN, CNBC, Home Shop 18, In.com, MoneyControl.com, which is at this point in time larger than the Wall Street Journal in terms of traffic uh, because it is pretty much the central hub for all of Asia for that. And when we were doing all of these very disparate websites and all of these very disparate applications, we'd have high traffic events from time to time and we'd have massive swings in traffic because of all sorts of events. You'd have a terrorist attack and all of the people all over the world would start looking for that and start hitting CNN IBN, which is CNN for India. Um, and what would happen is it would be massive amounts of traffic swings for each one of these applications. And the first thing that would break, as you've heard from multiple people already, is the database. And what we wanted to do is make sure that we could scale to those levels. So the top five, six developers of ours, out of a team of like 150 developers, were spending all of their time doing database scalability. And the things that they were implementing in these applications were pretty similar. They were doing the same kind of tricks from one application to the other to the other. Be it multi-master replication, master-master, scale out using slaves, uh, the ability to go ahead and cache data using memcached, the ability to go ahead and store large objects in MongoDB, and all of this was being done again and again. And every single time that a database problem would happen, somebody or the other would walk up to the infrastructure guys and the database guys and everybody else, what's wrong? Tell me why this is happening. So that's what we wanted to solve. We wanted to go ahead and make sure that we could solve that first problem, which is no real-time visibility into SQL traffic and queries. Show me what's happening at any point in time so I know what action to take for that. The second thing that we wanted to do is kill that forced one-is-to-one -one connections problem, which is there in databases. As you heard from everybody today, databases are scaling out. That's the way it's going to happen. There's no alternative to that. Scale-up is not the way to go in the future. But it's still quite difficult for applications to talk to more than one database server. There's all sorts of stuff you have to manage when you start talking to more than one database server, whether it be load balancing, whether it be stuff like figuring out what role that server is at any point in time, whether it's a master or slave, and how to go ahead and distribute your data between them. So all of that stuff is quite complicated, and the applications have to write all of that code in a very static manner to do that. It's not very dynamic. It's not a global view of things. A single PHP thread or a Perl thread or even a Java thread can't judge the load between 15 servers and distribute it evenly. That's just not how these development languages are written. The next thing that's there is most of us ended up using memcached or some sort of in-memory technology to go ahead and scale the database performance. And that's because SQL read performance sucks. We wanted to build that within the SQL protocol and solve that problem without modifying a single line of code in the application. The next thing, provide better high availability. And the last thing, prevent SQL insertion exploits. In the last five years, six years, that has been the most common attack vector into websites. We wanted to solve that once and for all without getting into the application. So that's what we wanted to do. What we did is build ScaleArc IDP. What it does is provides you instant SQL caching. It provides you dynamic load balancing between multiple servers. And we do this very intelligently. We can actually judge the load as well as the response time of each server in a cluster all the way down to 1% and send 1% more load to another server as compared to the uh, server which is slower. So if you have more cores in one server and less cores in another server, the, the server with more cores will automatically get more load. There's no need for you to write any application logic to do that. We do wire speed SQL filtering. So you can go ahead and say, here's the query I want to block. I have found this query. I don't know who wrote it last night. It's causing problems. I want to block this query without blocking all the other queries that are going through. So you can do that. You can also go ahead and get real-time analytics on every single thing that's happening in your SQL database. So that's what IDB does. Here's what it looks like. So what you do is you have a single cluster endpoint. And we've tested this with up to 12 servers in the back end on a single cluster endpoint. Uh, and uh, a single cluster pushing in surplus of 20 gigabits per second of throughput on a single hexa-core processor. That's the kind of throughput that we're aiming at. 
It's a network engine. It's a layer 7 SQL proxy. So what it does is once you have the single endpoint, you can then go ahead and set up rules against all of that stuff because we truly understand the SQL protocol end to end. We understand every single transaction that's executing, what it's trying to do, whether it's a transaction, whether it's a single query, whether it's a read, whether it's a write, what you need to do with that query, you can take an active decision based on that. And then you can go ahead and get multi-masters, multi-slaves, especially with the newer databases uh, like MemSQL, which are by default multi-master, you can use them and have a cluster of five databases and they'll be evenly distributed and load balanced automatically. There's no need for your application to try and figure out how to do that. The next thing that happens is we give you real-time visibility in the query, into the query flow. And this is on a full cluster basis. So you get to see that you can add cache and you can do that without modifying apps. And you do this very, very simply using our analytics, which I'll show you later. You can gain performance transparently. There's no need to change a single line of application code and no need to change the database itself. Sorry. You're, you're out of time. Great. Uh, we can Sorry. maybe...